Uh, David, we've known each other for, for well, probably at least 20 years and worked on lots of projects together. Um, but I guess times have never been tougher uh, than they are now. Uh, is that true? Is that a fair comment? Yes, I think that is true. Uh, certainly with the uh, public expenditure cuts earlier this year, so community links have been a very tough spring. Uh, but I think, like lots of people locally, we expect uh, the next couple of years to be equally difficult. Uh, and for many of those with whom we work, because that's been a double whammy, because uh, the problems have increased for them, rising unemployment, uh, at the same time as services have diminished. And then we see lots of other things happening out there, uh, increasingly ageing population, for instance, uh, which have meant, I think, that the list of things that are moving at the moment, things that are changing and not changing for the better, is probably longer uh, than at any time in my working life. And the issues are at least as deep, if not deeper. Yeah. And um, is necessity the mother of invention? I mean, is that is that leading to more interesting, more radical solutions, do you think? Or must it inevitably do that? Well, I, th I think it will lead to some. I mean, I think as a society we need a, a, a more open discussion about what public expenditure should be spent on and, and the core things that I think should be publicly funded. And uh, I don't think there's been the time to have that discussion. Uh, but I think out of out of uh, these years will emerge some new models. Mm. Um, but I hope that it won't mean that we abandon all that was good in the past, which is, at times has felt the way we're going. We mustn't yeah. throw babies out with bathwater. I mean, we're here talking about square miles. Um, I want to touch on a couple of those with you. I mean, you are working, as you have done for 33 years or longer, in the London Borough of Newham. You know, you're adjacent to this billion uh, pound project, internationally famous project of the Olympics, right on your doorstep. Um, and yet you are facing massive cuts as an organisation that's worked you know, from grassroots up for some considerable time. Now that obviously must create frustrations and tensions. I mean, just talk a little bit about that sort of adjacency to this massive international project that comes and goes like a big circus. Yes, and I, I think although the Olympics is obviously very, very high profile, I, I don't think it is very different from what's going on in lots of the communities that are here today, in, in, in Liverpool, in Birmingham and elsewhere now and over the years. There have been very large-scale regeneration projects. Uh, and, and significant investment both by government and from the private sector, cheek by jowl, with areas of considerable poverty. Mm. Uh, and I think as a country, we still haven't quite got it right in many places. In one or two we have, but in many places we haven't got it right how we connect up that prosperity uh, with the community that lives there already. And so the built environment changes hugely. Mm. But the lives of the people who were close to it uh, are very little. Mm. And I think that's the challenge uh, in East London at the moment, where the Olympics high profile though it is, is still only about 20% of the regeneration spend, so yes. it's a huge change there. Our, our challenge is to ensure that we connect that change with the needs of local people. And what happened with Canary Wharf, because you're also in the shadow of that, an, another earlier massive investment? Uh, yes, I think the positive answer to that is that lessons must be learnt from it. Uh, I, I think that it in a sea of, uh, well, that was pretty much the same as it was when they arrived. And uh, I think a number of the, the larger businesses, well, all the businesses, in fact, a number of those businesses in Canary Wharf have made uh, strides forward in trying to make links with the community in more recent years. But I don't think it happened at the beginning. And mm. I think still, uh, uh, we could do a great deal more to make that happen mm. now. Mm. And you've, I mean, you've had very good relations and support um, and, 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 you know, done very well, I suppose, in the square mile, which is the city of London. Yes. Um, what do you think, I mean, a very big, broad question, but what should the City of London and what should the world of business be doing now in this time of crisis? Yes, we are, we are fortunate to be relatively close to the city and also in the shadow of Canary Wharf, where there is considerable prosperity. I mean, that also has to be set against the fact that the East London boroughs have traditionally been one of the, the poorest areas in the country. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure that it is those really big businesses that are necessarily uh, the most important players in all this. And I, I think although uh, many of them have got a high profile in their community involvement, I think our, our history suggests to me that some of the medium-sized and small local businesses are at least as important, if not more important. And in fact, as a proportion of the size of the business, size of the workforce, size of the turnover, do at least as much, if not more, than some of those bigger names who uh, supplement their CSR budget with a bit of marketing spend as well and make sure that the whole world knows all about what they're doing. <laughs> yes. uh, well, those who hide their light under a bushel sometimes are doing rather more. So I, mean, I uh, yeah. absolutely think that yeah. small and local businesses are at least as important. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, just to echo that, I think what we've discovered in a lot of the square mile pilot areas is exactly that, but it's small and local businesses that can do the most. And I think small local charities in many ways, or small to medium sized charities, are the ones who are really tackling the tough, ingrained social problems that, as you say, all this massive infrastructure spending, despite being welcome sometimes, has not solved. 
and I think it's small local businesses working with them, providing things like <clears throat> uh, you know very practical support, like building management, uh, a space to go, IT support, helping with business plans, uh, legal and accountancy help. That's exactly the kind of uh, you know, practical help that they yes. need, and this kind of union of small local businesses and small local charities. If we could encourage that yes. in as many square miles of the UK as possible, yes. it would it would be fantastic. Yes. Well, and of course, it is a community that belongs to us all. I mean, we, we, yes. we, we wear different hats at different times. If any of us work in local organisations, mm. then we benefit from them as well. Whatever, yes. whatever we do in the day jobs, uh, so it's, it's yeah. one community. And I think that raises another very good point, which is you know, the, and you've been very good on this on this subject over the years. But I think this sort of vague do good is it. Um, that people have expected through time will, will bring many members of the community in, or some sort of sense that you need to be a community type of person, and some stereotype of what good community means. Actually, good community, as you say, is lots of things. It's thriving businesses, thriving local shops, markets, um, arts, leisure, all sorts of things, which are the very lifeblood of what we love most. It's yes. not this sort of dull, worthy thing that sometimes yes. it's been painted. Yes. Yes. And, and as you see today, I mean. It, just to say it's not it's not us it's not me this kind of gathering what, what do you mean by that you look around the people here today there's uh, young and old all sorts of different backgrounds yeah uh, and I think that is that is the beauty of the work that we're engaged with it's, yeah yeah it does involve everybody there's no reason why it shouldn't but talk to me about um, boundaries I mean you, you've used this phrase permeable boundaries which I think is very powerful just just elucidate on that a little bit Yes, I, in my remarks in a moment, I'm going to be recounted the story of the, the teacher who, who talk, talks to the children about the equator, mm. and she says it's an imaginary line around the middle of the, around the middle of the earth, and, and the story goes about the child who thought she said it was an imaginary lion around the middle of the earth, and, and I think too often uh, we think about lines of our communities as boundaries, as uh, controlled by lions, and, and certainly in our community and other inner city communities now, there's a real fear amongst young people about crossing those boundaries. Mm. It's not just a, a, a lack of knowledge, but a real fear, mm. and that's a very alarming trend indeed. Mm. And I think we've got to build communities in ways that people feel a real sense of identity and ownership and mm. cohesion mm. around that which is close to them. But at the same time, those boundaries are... are are welcoming and, and, and yeah. for us, and we feel uh, able and, and excited by crossing them. And we don't think that they are a patrol by lions, they really are imaginary lions. Yeah, I would echo that. I mean, the work, I think some of the most difficult and interesting that we've done with your square mile is is, is, is talking to people about defining areas. And what's, But what is interesting is that you get a workshop of 70 very, very diverse people, as we have done in 16 areas now. And actually, they can agree very, very clearly and quickly what is the neighbourhood. You know, yes. it stops at that arterial road, it yes. must include that school, it must have that path. And I think what's important is we're trying to establish several thousand local democracies, local yes. square miles, that people themselves describe, they name, they own, it becomes our square mile, Weavers, New and whatever it might be, our square mile. But, as you say, it has permeable boundaries in the sense that they can work with the areas next door and also they can exchange ideas. Yes. And that's something else I wanted to just ask you about because you've done for years Community Links has been brilliant at these sort of ideas annuals. I know you don't do them anymore because there's so much else going on, but um, the exchange of ideas um, between voluntary sector organisations throughout the UK. Um, say a bit about that. I mean, it doesn't happen as much as we might expect, does it? And there's, there's a room for a lot more. And wanting to develop them, but I think we can also learn much more than we do from. from mm. And I think funders have a part to play in that as well, in, in constantly looking for the new. Yes. Which means that even when an idea isn't particularly new and we know that it isn't, we try to pretend that it's new in order mm. to attract some funding for it. And, and mm. that's incentivizing entirely the wrong things. I yeah. think we need to look at what works, we need to share that, and we need to adapt it to, to work in our community. And in the end, it probably will end up looking a little bit different from what happened in other places, but that sharing is critical. And, and, and we. Uh, that it is some way second rate to mm. say this this idea came from somewhere else no, I, I, and, it, and it works yeah, here. I agree. That's terrific. Of, and what's interesting that is, is, and you've touched on it there, is adapting because I think what's happened in the past is that the governments have been you know, quite guilty of this is they find something that works and yes. they immediately want to industrialise it. Yes. It's just like yes. we want a hundred kids companies or whatever. Yeah. And you can't because there aren't a hundred Camillas. What you can have is you can take the tools and the learning of kids company or brilliant projects and then encourage local leaders to take it up and do it their way and I think yes. that's, that's very important. Um, one final question, um, what would you most like to see uh, emerge from your square mile as a movement? What would matter most to you? It's worked, uh, uh, you know, the cold face of communities for so long. Uh, I, I think to uh, uh, think about the strengths of our communities and about what we 
develop those strengths. I think too much, uh, too much thinking on some of the communities in some of the communities here today, and, and certainly in our communities in East London, has been focused on the negative. Mm. Uh, I think our, my vision of a strong community is one where people are uh, ready to go to school at five, they're, they're ready to, to succeed in secondary at 11, they're ready for work at 18 or 20, ready to be parents when the time comes. And, and because bad stuff happens too, we're, you know, we're ready to cope with, with bereavement or with mm. losing our jobs from time to time. The, ready for everything mm. is, is, I think, the kind of community in which I want to live. And, and I think, how do we develop those strengths mm. so we don't then need crisis services mm. that try to put the pieces back together when it's all fallen apart? Mm. That's a crazy way to work, and it's mm. an expensive way to work for, for the wider society. It's painful, it's traumatic for everybody, mm. and it's wrong. Yeah, absolutely agree. And in order to do that... Uh, and, and my fervent hope is that Square Mile can create very rich ecosystems, whatever you want to call them, of local people who... You know, that we develop new habits in a sense and we and we start thinking that if we're using for example social networking tools that we use them locally first yes. and foremost you know, all of these things that we've now got at our disposal they should be there to provide a local exchange of yes. resource and time and that people see their community as something that, that is a huge resource that they're not having enough so that's a kind of selfish opportunity in a way you know yes. positively yes. selfish opportunity as well as giving one yes. uh, rather than it being this rather po-faced thing it is something that's no, inspiring and uplifting and empowering to people. Good. Good to talk. Good luck. Thank you.